I've been involved for about 18 months now, as soon as Drew Hutton um, started working on this issue after the first showing of gas lands in Queensland. Yeah, I really admire how far this have all come in this last year, you know, to watch all of that there, to have meetings like this. We don't get that in Queensland, it's really a shame. There were over 4,000 wells in South East Queensland before anyone knew anything. There are 40,000 wells proposed for that area, which means that it's just like a shower head on your shower with little holes all over it. Um, it's been really hard to get Tara, where we had the blockade, the people there, their lives are basically finished. They cut the land in the Tara estate. I have to distinguish between Tara, the little town of Tara, and the Tara estate, which is acreages of anything from 40 to 100 acres. They have got wells everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there are sick people there. They are mainly um, not very well-off people. People are trying. People can't sell. The, es the estate agents in the towns will not list their properties because you just can't sell a property without gas well. They have got mortgages. They're only very small mortgages of twenty or thirty or forty thousand um, dollars, but they can't afford to go anywhere else because they've got that land and I'll have the bank chase them. So they have really and truly lost out through all of this. Um, we do plan in the future to look at the ways that we can actually get the government to compensate these people because most of them are either retired or on sickness benefits and just chose to go and live out in the, the scrub away from everything where they could raise their children and uh, in a healthy, good environment. Um, we still, the, the big landowners, the people growing our food, our food bowl and that up there, so many Queenslanders have, I use the expression, heads in the sand. They still believe, I suppose, going back to Joe Giocchi's days, I'm not a Queenslander, I've only been there a few years, but from what I've heard, they believe the government will look after them that you do trust the government. They're also frightened of um, making a show of themselves. You don't uh, get out and, and, and protest and, and get arrested because that's really, really frowned upon. They are outback, good, honest, clean people who are afraid and, and still believe that they'll be looked after. There are people coming on board there hasn't yet been any um, mining company. Queensland, um, oh, what's it? Queensland Coal Seam Gas Company is the main one up there. They're apparently even talking to the workers. They are the worst company to work for. They give no conditions. They don't want to talk to you. It's, um, it's quite scary what's happening there. Whereas you know, down here you do have people that are backing off and wanting to uh, negotiate and things like that. Up there, it is different. Uh, our blockade last year it uh, ran for 100 days. We lived in a, um, a bush block with um, portaloos bought in, um, a temporary shower put up, cooking out in the open down on the grass over the ground, and it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people come through. Uh, we go out every day to. Um, suss out where something might be happening and then come back and get a lot of people and we just go out onto the road and, and block the trucks. But we didn't stop it. It was too far gone. Too many people had already signed. All of these people got there two and three years ago signed their land over and you hear the stories from the people saying they didn't have a choice. The people came in and said, this is what you have to do. Here's $2,000 or they can give them $2,000. We'll pay a, a lawyer's bill of up to $2,000 after you've signed this to go in and have him um, tell you what it's all about. And because the lawyers out there, one guy that we blockaded on his land, he just said, the lawyer said, oh, I've never seen one of these before. You've got to do what they tell you to do. And so they really 
believed they didn't have a choice. And they had things um, just mentioned about clearing 20, 20 metres, and this guy signed over for them to clean, clear 20 metres, and they cleared 40 metres. And it was just like a massive highway up and down and around his whole uh, 100 acre property of bushland. Um, I'm not too sure anything else <laughs> because I know you're on time limit here and I don't want to over talk. Uh, I will be available to talk um, later if anyone wants to ask any more questions. Also, a little plug um, UNESCO is coming out um, in March this year. Uh, for the, barrier, the Great Barrier Reef, which has been impacted in Gladstone. I don't know if you've seen what's happening up in Gladstone. I've actually been up there and been part of the protest up there. It is absolutely devastating. And so UNESCO will be in Gladstone on the 8th of March and then moving further up. So I've organised a walk. I'm walking from just outside Dorby, where they're in the process of laying the pipelines to pump the first lot of gas from the coal seams up to Gladstone to then going up to um, India and China and wherever. So I'm actually walking the pipeline, it won't be the exact pipeline because a lot of the properties you can't get through, but then starting on the 9th of March, um, I'll have a little barrow thing, one of those trailers that go behind a push bike, I'll have one of those with the gear in. I have one um, young man who's walking all the way with me with his dog. And anyone else who wants to come up and join and walk any distance whatsoever through these towns, talking to the people, um, hopefully getting lots and lots of media to get it out there and then we'll be walking into Gladstone and hopefully meeting with the UNESCO people. Because this is our Great Barrier Reef. This is, you know, if you talk to anyone overseas at, between uh, Uluru and the Sydney Harbour, it's the Great Barrier Reef. And it's at risk of just being completely, completely destroyed. So, yes, any um, support, help, anyone wants to come and join me for that walk would be great. I must admit, I know it's 550 kilometres, <laughs> but that's actually quite a small, short walk for me. Um, I have two passions in life. One of them is my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I have ten grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. And I am doing this because what am I leaving them? You know, what are they going to have if we don't stop this madness? And the other passion is walking. I have walked from London to Ge Geneva, um, Geneva to Brussels, last year Kalgoorlie to Perth. And these were all against uh, uranium mining. But they're called Peace Walks. I'll be walking under the umbrella of Footprints for Peace, which is a global organisation. And this is definitely against peace, what we're doing. So um, it's my two passions I'm combining, walking and my great-grandchildren and 